guiding light of the organization, and until her death in 1969. Then others, including Ed and Marguerite Quinn, kept things going until Margaret Tibbetts arrived and retired from the uh, retired from the State Department and became one of the guiding lights for a number of years. Uh, and the society acquired this headquarters in 1974, which made such a big difference in its success. Since that time, membership has grown to nearly 1,445 states, uh, Canada, and some yes. European nations. Uh, the endowment has grown uh, to over 600,000, 650,000, and the budget has passed $100,000, so which doesn't seem possible it's gone that far. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to balance as we all know. Uh, the two society buildings are insured for more than a million dollars. It doesn't seem possible about that either, so uh, we were just shocked when we learned that the, they wanted to up the insurance on Robin's house uh, a couple of years ago. We were all we were shocked that they wanted to value yeah. that. Um, and we have had 40 years of exhibits, publications, special events, and all kinds of fun. This has been a fun organization to be with for so long. Uh, we continue, however, to be, uh, and, and the thinking, uh, most organizations, and particularly this one, uh, never has enough of, never enough income, never enough uh, volunteers, never enough uh, uh, endowment, and never enough good publicity. So those things you always know you need more of. So, so we don't want to feel complacent by the celebration tonight, because we know we always need more of those. And we also need to build the Robinson House, uh, as we know, in addition. So those things are the challenges ahead. But think about what those people in 1966 thought. Uh, did they ever dream that we'd be this far along? Uh, and so I think it makes us feel a little more, uh, maybe, and. I think the discussion tonight will bring up some of these things when we went along these various stages. Did we ever think we'd ever get to that stage? And, and we had a number of cases. So uh, these are among our challenges for the future. And we're fortunate tonight to have some of the people who uh, have been a great part of that success story. We have uh, Don Bennett. Don, you want to raise your hand? Anybody doesn't know you? Okay. <laughs> we have Alden Kennett. Uh, we have Marvin Winger. We have Jane Hosterman. We have Walter Hatch, and we have Al, uh, we have uh, uh, Alvin uh, uh, Alan Jodry, and we have uh, and we have Rosalind Chapman, who is a charter member. I think at this time it might be good to have just a moment of silence. However, we lost two charter members in this year. Uh, Mike Carter Dean died earlier this year, and on May 6th, Elizabeth Mason Carter died. And so we have two uh, charter members. So if we just have a second of, of, of a moment of silence, we now have only two charter members left, uh, Janet Richardson and Rolly. So this is what we have. So we have two uh, very able people still alive and still with us. So let's hope they're with us for many more years. Let's have a moment of silence for these two lost charter members.
meeting room down to the Gasco Bank. Right. Right. Well, we had the house, but right. things really began to get started as soon as we could get up here. Right. 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 Okay. Into Thank a house where there was nothing in it. That's right. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> when I arrived here. <laughs> we. Uh, I remember one meeting we had up in the uh, the uh, office room up here, and all we had to do was someone I don't know who, but had given a whole lot of. Oxford County, well, that wasn't the name of it then, was it? But anyway, it was not the paper. Oh, that was that the paper? Yeah, yeah and uh, yeah. what we did was we sat on the floor around the circle, and each had a bunch of papers, and they kept, we put them in order, and that was all we could do. Yes, and Randy always reminds me, he was here before I was. That's right, I was. Yeah, I, I came, my first uh, uh, visit here at the Society was in, the winter of 1974, I think it was in February, and I was student teaching down at Telstar High School, and I called, Kathy Newell had gotten in touch with me, and we wanted to do, an L, uh, do a section on local history, and she said, well, you need to go up to the Moses Mason house, she said, and Raleigh Chapman will be there. So we met upstairs, before Stanley was in the building, and <laughs> sat on the floor in the office, there was no furniture up Just there. Just like now. He's and there, there were two or three boxes of things that we went through and was there had, still like hay up there? No, there was no hay. No it was hay. just a storage area. But the rooms were finished, but there was no okay. furniture. So we sat on the rug and we went through boxes of things. And I think of that today as we keep adding things and looking at the size of the collection that it started with those three or four boxes in nineteen seventy four. So lots changed. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Raleigh, how about another question? What were some of the early memories of the society's activities during this early period? What are some of the things you remember? Anything you remember, Well, we had a hard time getting started. We had some friction among members, and that lasted quite a while, but we finally got that worked out. I guess everyone's satisfaction there. We were able to get started a little, but uh, Randy can tell you as much as I can what we did for. We didn't have much, much program. I do remember that we had a uh, an antique show in the Gotham Chapel, one of the big things, one of the first things that people knew that we were alive. And that was fun to do. It took quite a lot of work. And uh, Ed Quinn did a lot for that. He, he uh, had lost his arm in a railroad accident, but he, 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 he taught it around then to just like he, he had two arms and did so much work, and he was great. Good, And I don't remember any other special meeting right at the beginning. Remember the yards of pennies, do you? Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We had no money. We had to think about what would we ever do to raise money. Well, somebody came up with, what about a yard of pennies? Let's see if we can get enough yards of pennies to make a mile of pennies. So this was our first project for everyone to put their pennies and measure them and bring them to the house. And that, I don't know how much, I don't think we ever got the mile of you. Well, I think they did. I think they did. I think they did. Okay. Do you remember, Randy? No, no. It seems to me you did. Yeah, yeah I think, I think so. It took a while. Yeah. Okay. What are your recollections of Eva Bean? She was great, and she went right ahead. She knew what to do, and she told each one of us that we would work on some particular story about Bethel way back. So she appointing each one of us what we would do. And at each meeting, we would do our thing. Well, that lasted quite a while, because it was quite a few of us. Yep. And I guess that day, I still have Yes, it's notes up there that she brought from that period. That's yeah. right. And also, she was a great historian. And to, she was going to find out who lived where and what they did. And she worked on it for a long time. And she left us. One of the first collections is her, her papers up there in the archives in the Eva Bean That's right. Okay, what impression do you have of others who are child members? Do you have any <coughs> that you remember well? 
myself as a child, as a child member. <laughs> Did you talk about it? <laughs> 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 You're all dead wrong. You can tell the story your own way.
tried to get some interest started in celebrating Patriots Day, since we have the holiday and we have the school week out, but we didn't have any real uh, way to pinpoint in people's minds what the what Patriots Day really meant. Remember we had the, oh, yes. had, we had a parade. It was the first time since I've been here where we were able to get in touch with a group of, of revolutionary period uh, reenactors and had a uh, revolutionary camp on the common. And I think that attracted a lot of attention. And then <clears throat> the following year was the year of the uh, Indian Raid celebration in, 18, in 1981. And some of that same group came back. And I found that, uh, at least in my opinion, that the, the people who came both times in 1980 and 81 were very interested in seeing how people lived because they camped out overnight on the common, they cooked their fires and they had their tents. And I think the, for the lack of a better word, the, the core of what I was thinking of and what Stanley and I worked together on had to do with, you might say, hands-on history for people who were living in this area who were, who were visiting here at the time these events occurred. And then the same thing was true with the uh, Southern Canada Day to try to get people who were not, you might say, intellectually tuned in on studying history, at least to enjoy uh, watching Alden uh, viewing a log. And uh, <coughs> now I can't think of his first name, Old Mr. Skilling. I've had so many skillings in my mind, I <laughs> lose track of them. And then the, uh, you know, like the horseshoes and, and pastimes was the part where we <clears throat> worked together, and I think I, I remember very clearly, it attracted a lot of interest because of uh, not having to think about it so much to see how things work. And the, uh, <clears throat> Weaving and uh, Jane Grover with the spinning wheel and the, it was things of that type. Yeah, fish and crafts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, how about you, uh, Walter? Well, you got to go in order. Yeah, I'm going to go in order. I'm just going to go. I just want to see what the oldest, uh, the oldest, most senior president here, but, but, but way back, way back. But uh, okay. The, you, you and a number of them won't make much difference now. I think you're, you're all the. Well, I was lucky to be here when the Robinson House expansion was uh, cooking, <laughs> so uh, things were very exciting then, having to uh, solve all kinds of problems with the uh, clear title for the property. I guess there was a lien that took a long time for the Bethlehem to clear. It was sort of a dead lien, but it was still on the books, and uh, until it was cleared, we couldn't close on the property, and so that was one hurdle. Right, you went down. You went down to the famous signing when they signed the contract. And then they had all these voluminous papers we were signing right and left. Not quite sure what we were signing away. Huge amounts of money were passing back and forth. So that was really, really exciting. And of course, about a year. I guess we rented or right. the and leased it for almost a year, and then we moved in in 2000. Was it that we moved in or 99? No, and we moved in in 99 or closed in 99? I guess we moved in in 99. Yeah, we moved in 99. We, we closed in 98, I think it was. Yeah. That so, so. was, was quite a thing. So that was, I was at the right place at the right time, I guess you'd say. <laughs> really see something exciting happen uh, right, right while I was president. Yeah. I remember I went from four square foot office space to my spacious office now. It's yeah. incredible how that happened. That was a, that was a real transformation, believe yeah, me. It's a wonderful it's office that it, it is we kind of lucked into up there. But everybody remarks about it. I <laughs> used to visit there. Yeah. Those two offices are the best offices in town, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so. Lots of light, nice view. Yeah. Um, terrific. Right. Thank you. Uh, Alden? <clears throat> well, I don't uh, kind of have to be careful. I, I, I come from away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do, Alden. Uh, of course, the reason 
reason that I'm <laughs> living here is because I was posted here by a fish and game department. And uh, my original posting was in southern uh, Arusha County. And up there, I was from outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just minor same difference. Way. It's the same, same thing, but it's, you know, <laughs> different. And uh, uh, you have to be kind of careful uh, because you don't know the politics of the place. You come in. People are born brought up there know stuff they don't even know to know. <laughs> and, but uh, I would like to mention my personal uh, <clears throat> acquaintanceship with uh, Eva Bean. Uh, one day I was uh, up behind their place there out on the road over there chasing dogs in the woods. And uh, uh, I come to the end of that their big long field and I snowshoe down across the field there and so forth. And she, she was right at the back door as I came down through. Just, uh, come in, come in. Judging from the size snowshoes that I used to have to wear. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, another thing, uh, snowshoes only make the impossible difficult. <laughs> but anyway, she invited me in. It was nothing but I had to have breakfast. And uh, I gave you with eggs, bacon, coffee, the whole nine yards. You know. I didn't know her, really know her from the whole ball. Uh, she was a very, very pleasant lady. That's great. And, uh, Anyway, as far as uh, uh, 1981 was uh, when I was elected vice president, I that you know, Don Slate And uh, the Indian raid was uh, quite a, I, I didn't join the uh, Historical Society of Raid at first. And I tried, I, I couldn't even find my diaries because they're not annotated or anything in it. I couldn't find them where I joined them. Joined the group. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, the, uh, the Indian raid was really the first uh, thing that I really remember that I was kind of involved in. And uh, it had something to do with the militia units that were here. And uh, the most, uh, <coughs> most styling thing that has happened is I was killed in scalp. <laughs> I was put in a uh, split rail fence right here on the front lawn, and uh, this uh, rather naked gentleman with a very shot on the hair and so forth, uh, but his last name was Siegel. So, but anyway, he said, he said uh, before, before this occurred, he says, uh, he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw you down on the ground. He says, when you hit the ground, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't, and there was a tomahawk that came in right in this area somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I know, he was standing up holding what appeared to be a gray scalp. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
published two books, both done by Randy. Um, well, I guess I ought to get the man who, whose notes were on the Richardson Lakes that oh, yeah. Randy took and put into thick book form. Um, I think those were important. Your comment about things moving nicely. I think if you're on a board, it's a volunteer board, it's my thought that you hire professionals or have professionals that really know more than the board does. So you and Randy know more than us on board do about the subject or you wouldn't be here. Sometimes. Well, you can always have new no information all the time. So. Okay. Uh, but let me tell uh, when we first moved here from LA, um, it was in the newspaper that there was going to be a, store, a, a, a class on the history of Maine. And my husband said, well, since we didn't know anything about Maine, it might be wise to take that class. <laughs> so guess who was teaching it, you know? So we came down here, and uh, if you join, you get a discount. Uh. Book, you know. <laughs> so we uh, joined and got a discount. And some very nice lady who is not here tonight but um, still around said to me, be careful or he'll have you doing a lot of stuff. And, and you'll, you'll find yourself spending a lot of time. 25 years has gone by, <laughs> and I'm still here most, most Tuesdays. <laughs> I'm very happy about it. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay, Ma, how about you? Do you want to go through the questions? Or? This is the first question. What issue do you think of? Are they special? As I recall, the thing that we had was space problems. Some of the, the uh, fun things, uh, I remember Sis Post always getting me to make Oli Bowen around at Christmas time or around New Year's. I'd have to make two or three batches of Oli Bowen. She was always great about that, whole stories of food, and, and uh, she always made these great things. And uh, another thing I remember that was, was a lot of fun was What's It Night. I always had What's It Night. I'd have these objects. And guess for a great deal of time until finally somebody said, oh yeah, that's a whatever, whatever widget. It's attached to something else. That was kind of fun. I enjoyed that. So, uh, I guess that's, that's mostly what I can recall. Yeah. The, well, the moving, uh, I remember one other incident. Um, <coughs> probably mentioned moving uh, the Ed Quinn 
Slim collection, and I remember moving that from John Todd's barn down to Railroad Street uh, at one point. Yeah. Uh, it was a project we, we had as a kind of a group from Gould went over there. It was a, a sort of a service project, and we moved that. So I would call that. I think that's, that's mainly what I could think of, and I <coughs> miss all the old spaces. I guess I would like to uh, go back a little bit in history to start with. It seems like I can remember when I was a kid watching Dan Durrell working his workshop in this room here. It seemed like there was a door in this side here. Was, yeah. And uh, as, as a kid, we'd always ride our bikes up there, watch him working and repairing windows and chairs, whatever he did. But he was always working his shop. He always had the door open during the summer. I vividly remember that. But uh, you mentioned here tonight people being from way. We wouldn't be much if we didn't have people from Way on our team here. You know, people from Way have moved in the shape of themselves. <laughs> they deserve a lot of credit. And, uh, and I'll go back a few years, not too long ago, but uh, John Bailey was the uh, late John Bailey was instrumental in us acquiring the Robinson House. He was the in-between person between us and uh, the Bethlehem folks. And I think if it had not been his persistence, we would have probably backed up and never believed the thing happen. So he was from away, but he was really interested. He tried to help. And one other thing that I uh, can't go off and not to mention it is uh, Walt Hatch and his uh, persistent bookkeeping. <laughs> Walt has struggled for years and years and years trying to balance the budget. He between he and Al, it's almost there now, not quite. <laughs> We've run and read it for years and years. And, uh, and uh, these two fellows are from away, but they, they're making it happen for us. And they're insisting we're going to have a balanced budget, and, uh, and I'll be right there supporting them if they can ever do it. Um, and it goes on to uh, it's finally acquiring the Robinson House, and I think at the time, at the, Oh my God, what did we take this shack on for? That was my opinion. <laughs> we were down in the basement, no. It's awful, it still is. But uh, looking back on it, I think it probably was a real good purchase for the society and the community. I think it's helped protect Broad Street. I think what we've done so far has been very well accepted by the public. Uh, we have a long way to go, but. Uh, it takes money, it takes time, and it's not like an individual going ahead and trying to do a project, you go ahead and get it done, but when you're doing it by, by mob, it takes forever to get anything accomplished, and I think we're at that mode right now, I'm frustrated with uh, our progress on uh, continuing to expand our project. Uh, we did get the old L torn down, the old motel rooms, and we thought, well, gee, in a couple of years, we'll get going, and start a new project, but that's not to be, I guess, for a long time out, perhaps. Uh, one thing I do feel bad is we left an eyesore in the back there. Stan says it isn't, but it's an eyesore in my book. We, it's pretty crude. We didn't put any money into putting the clapboards back and painting and make it look good. It's, it's like we just tore the shack off and, and uh, patched it up for now. That's supposed to stimulate somebody to uh, come up ahead and get rid of it. Um, but it hasn't. But it hasn't yet. Be patient. It's only a couple years. So, so. If we get back to the storage thing, I have to mention that. Uh, I think it's a crime when we can't uh, take on artifacts and gifts that families want to give us. We don't have place for it. And I think that somehow we need to get the momentum going to create a place to, uh, to store these, uh, these goodies that people want us to have. But uh, we'll probably get there someday. We're making progress. Well, and, and remember, um, it, it, uh, it'll happen if we just believe it will. So, uh, but then the farmers never agreed we got this far, probably 40 years ago. So, okay, uh, let's move on to the next one, which is. Uh,
I think we, we covered sort of one and two. Let's go on to number three. Uh, what is your most vivid memory of an incident or development that occurred while you were president? Uh, let's start with uh, uh, Alan. Why don't you give us a, um, do you have any incident that happened while you were president that was funny or you can give us or interesting or something? No, I don't think so. No, you don't have I just, remember, talk about? I just remember far too many meetings. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Don, do you have a? I've been in the original. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, the, the vivid memory I have is just you now chuckling to myself when Margaret was running, when we would have a meeting of, I guess, trustees in Austin. Boy, it was bam, bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. There was no discussion. It was on to the next item. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Paula? Well, I have a couple. One phrase on what you just said because uh, there was this one guy that joined the trustees that didn't know that there wasn't supposed to be any discussions. <laughs> and this, this one guy, when it came, when Margaret said, well, it takes care of that, let's you know, that there's nothing to discuss or something. I said, wait a minute, I have a question. And I got this real weird look from <laughs> Stan is frowning like, <laughs> The other vivid memory, which really isn't a historical type accomplishment, but an accomplishment for the town, was when we first started the uh, New Year's Bethel celebrations, much to, uh, I, I guess the credit goes to Susan Hurley for generating the idea. But I remember what a high it was for me that first night to see all of the uh, delighted people enjoying the performances and know that the historical society had stuck his neck out, you might say, and uh, pulled off a community event. So that was one really uh, vivid memory that still sticks in my mind was that first New Year's Bethel that we did. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Alden? <coughs> I, I got a magnitude to the story. Uh, I think that she used to call the Historical Society uh, a guided democracy. I think it's hard to remember. But uh, uh, I, one thing I remember as president, we had quite a lot of this business when it got time for that. <laughs> well, uh, uh, there was another time, I think it must have been a trustees meeting or something, and uh, there was some discussion about uh, the uh, building committee or a committee to look out for buildings or some such, and uh, uh, she, was telling about how she thought that, well, probably it should be, you know, somebody from Maine, somebody somebody local. And then she looked over at me and she said, well, they couldn't come as from as far away as Massachusetts. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, Jay? We had the first 4th of July celebration with the okay. brass band. Brass
should have mentioned that it came here from Michigan, so okay. well, from pretty well. Mm -hmm. Far, far, far away. And another little thing that came to mind, um, Walter was talking about the New Year's Eve Bethel. I remember almost freezing to death that night. <laughs> <laughs> that first night was one of the coldest cold snaps that I ever remember. I don't know how many below. And I had Steve White's bus drawn uh, to drive. And I could drive a bus and I'm used to it, but I could not find the heater. <laughs> to save my soul, I could not find the heater on that bus. So I remember driving somewhere and then leaving the bus and rushing into the house or something and trying to warm up. And then I'd have to do my bus thing and I'd go out and I'd drive again and then I'd try to warm up. And, and then someone else came on who was... A Sam Redondo. Sandy, right. And she I went and got my boots for her, my L.O.V. boots, and, and yeah, we talked. Yeah. She didn't have anything but Walmart stuff. Well, the interesting thing is, she's a regular experienced driver. Yeah. And she said, oh, yeah, the switch is down here. And she put the switch <laughs> on. <laughs> I didn't freeze the death all the time. She all toasted the world. So uh, okay. that, that old bus of stuff yeah. almost killed a whole bunch of us. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> My recollection was 19 below that evening. That was yeah, cool. Cool. I believe it. Randy remembers it well. Watch Randy, Randy out yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Right. I, I, made, I made popcorn and hot chocolate <laughs> out here. Right. And, and, yeah. and Fran Bernier finally gave me some of those things that you snap and they get warm. And she said, let me put one down your back. <laughs> so, I'm out there, it was really cold, really cold. And she put it down my back, and as I moved and made more popcorn, it began to crawl down, and eventually it came out my pant leg. But I was warm, parts of me were warm for a while. It was cold. We had hot and chilly. Yes, we did. We had a lot of it. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, maybe we can go, I think we come by in this other the three and four, but maybe we see if they have a more humorous story. Anyone have any other humorous story they'd like to tell about their, their time when they were president? Or their memories of back when? Well, I just have one little tidbit. When I was uh, first secretary, uh, the first meeting, you know, you had to write up the minutes and read them at the following meeting. And I was taking notes carefully. And I think it was a previous secretary that uh, told me that you don't have to do all that stuff. All you're going to do is look at Stan's column in the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> crime does not pay, though, because uh, the time came, it was right before the meeting, and I tried to find the newspaper, so I could write the minutes. And uh, my wife had thrown it out. I had to go buy a new Bethel citizen. <laughs> investment in this Moses Mason building? 300000 And you know not all that much of what it should have done probably, but uh, it, uh, that was what it was, 300000 So they have, a, the insurance company insured it for $600,000, but I think that the value is still carry on this building, so. Because by that time, inflation, is, when they insured it, it's gone. The original 300000 to restore this building, and they, they, uh, they figured it must be worth 600000 a day to it. Probably more than that now, so. Probably irreplaceable, really. Oh, it is. Well, there are, there's a lot of, a lot of these houses that are irreplaceable, that's right. The, 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 the uh, heroes in the front, front of all of them, so. Anybody got any, from the audience, anybody got any questions or comments that they'd like to make at this time? Nobody? Nobody got anything to say? Okay. Well, I'd like to, uh, uh, Al Cressy's going to, uh, because I'm not a past president. I, I was cautioned by Stan to uh, <laughs> talk about remarks. But uh, as a current president, I uh, truly uh, feel honored to follow in the footsteps of uh, these past presidents. Uh, I always play it as a sense of ownership, excitement, uh, concern. over what's happened over the past four years. And uh, since
inside them associated with a society which has been about 10 years. So I, I'm also from Hawaii, but I'm a, a Mainer. Mm -hmm. right. I'm a coastal boy. Maybe that doesn't count, but I am still from Hawaii. But uh, when my wife and I first came to Bethel on Molly Aka Day 10 years ago or so, uh, we joined the Historical Society. We saw a lifetime membership as the best buy in town. <laughs> And um, I still think it's the best buy in town. Um, I think throughout the evening, we, we've been talking about the issues, the, the major things that we need to be concerned about. And collections continues to, to surface. Um, I will always remember that day when the trustees uh, were led on a tour by Randy of the collections. While we looked under beds, we looked up in the attic, we looked in Stan's barn, and it, it suddenly impressed on all of us that we truly have a magnificent collection, but we need to double our efforts to get that preserved and to be displayed. So the Robinson House expansion is, is the thing that, that we need to vigorously pursue. Um, I'm pleased to announce this evening that at the uh, last board meeting, uh, the board approved the concept, a uh, trustees advisory board. This will comprise uh, a number of people that have displayed leadership in the society over the past uh, years to uh, join us as trustees and uh, offer advice because there is still that sense of ownership, excitement, and willingness to contribute, and ability to contribute. So I, I view this as a, a really important step in the society. Stan and I feel strongly that, that this will help uh, us move ahead to gain the experience, the corporate memory that, that you folks, among others, uh, offer to us. And there's lots of people out here that could That's do, right. Do, 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 do so do so. you'll hear more about that as we uh, begin to people nominated and, and aboard. Uh, I'd like to tell two funny stories, at least to me. Uh, the first being that uh, at the annual meeting, we have a very uh, illustrious invitee by the name of Piglet. <laughs> Piglet had a great time, but almost turned over the dessert table, which <laughs> was really uh, <laughs> a lot of people. The, uh, the other thing, uh, some of you may know that uh, Bill Andrews, a member of the Society, uh, is about ready to uh, uh, have a book published. It's a uh, murder mystery, a novel, centered on a historical society, centered in Western Maine. And the plot is that the, among other things, is that the executive director is murdered. The, 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 the previous one, right? The previous one. Previous one. Yeah. So you can see Stan looking nervously <laughs> as he walks down the street. Uh, he'll know why, but uh, we hope to have a book sign on the summer. Bill uh, will be here to uh, talk about his book and to, uh, to sign the book. Okay. okay. Um, we would like to, uh, uh, Al, other. Uh, Present, I also present uh, everybody who's here tonight a uh, uh, certificate. This one for the charter members is uh, Bethel Strokes High Regional History Center, Bethel, Maine, 40th anniversary charter member recognition, presented to Roswell Road Charter, a grateful recognition for her role as a founder of the organization on this 11th day of May 2006. Signed, Stanley R. Albert, Executive Director, Alan Cressy, uh, President, Chairman of the Board. So, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Yeah,
But Ms. Donald, is he better? Yeah. Could I just say something? I don't know. Thank you. 